regularly priced thrift shop items. Op shops that have things for less than $10. Yay! Well guys, I finally did it. I made it out of the city to go op shopping with a friend and the prices were so much better. Hi and welcome to Well Read Wardrobe. I'm Kristen, a full-time American reseller who moved from Seattle to Sydney. And now I'm starting my business over. Sourcing here has been tough. It's so much more expensive than what I was used to. I was a Goodwill bin shopper. I was used to paying by the pound and my items were regularly $2 or less a piece when averaged out. Shopping in the city, so much more expensive. Today's haul is a bit of a mix. We've got four shops to visit. I only made purchases at three and some of these items I'm keeping for myself. If you've watched from the beginning of my journey overseas, then you know I only came with a box, a suitcase, and a carry-on. I need to rebuild a wardrobe as well as decorate a home. And it felt really nice to go to some stores that were affordable where I could start doing that. And I did the math. Everything you're gonna see today comes out to $65.18 American, so US dollars. This first shop was a Salvos or a Salvation Army. There were two different sales happening here this week. Orange tags were half off and green tags were $2. I loved that this store separated their green tags out. I could go to the $2 rack and just have at it. The other color of the week was still on the floor. You had to hunt for it, which I also appreciate. It meant I could go to the sections I wanted and find treasure. So I started at the green rack, and one of the first things I found was a pair of athletic capris with that symbol, which is Lorna Jane. These have some ruching details at the side, tied, knee length, and along with Lululemon, I see a lot of women on the street in Lorna Jane. These are a size small. They originally wanted $10 for these, and I got them for two. Another green tag, so $2. My new friend Sonia found this and passed it along to me. It's this gorgeous dress by the brand Q. With asymmetrical details. And it's got a kind of 80s flair to it. With a back exposed zipper. This is a size six Australian and it was $15. And I got it for $2. I was so happy at that $2 rack. More green tags. Originally 15. This brand is hard to pronounce. Shakua Chi. And that is probably wrong. It is a US extra small. Orange silk midi to maxi length, high, low, bright, gorgeous dress. $2. I love paying $2. Now we did start in the $2 section because I was very much trying to concentrate on reselling and bringing home inventory, especially in this first shop. In restarting my business after moving, I've taken it from the ground up all the way back to business models. What does my business model look like now that I'm here in Sydney as opposed to Seattle, where the cost of goods is so much higher? I have relatively small space to work with and low capital to start. Well, I've been spending a lot of time watching videos by Chris at The Daily Refinement. While I absolutely think I could make a $10 profit from most items, 
due to the higher cost here, I'm going to have to invest more to earn that $10. And that just isn't going to work for me. That's a lot of cash being tied up for a low profit. And doing a lot of math, if I'm going to invest more on an item, I need to also be doubling or tripling that money. What I would really like to see is a $20 minimum profit per piece, especially when I'm trying to make $500 profit per week or more. That's, that's a minimum. I want to do beyond that, but that's going to be my first little bit of a stretch goal as I'm seeing here now. Sometimes with a lower cost per item, you can flip for less and still make that $20 mark. I am trying to stick with buying lower priced inventory as much as I can, but it also has to meet the criteria of being able to make me $20 per piece. Otherwise, I just don't think it's worth my time. I say all this knowing that it could change at any time. I could start work full time. I could gain more of a traction on eBay and suddenly things are flying out the door. Let's hope for that. But I need to have some sort of plan. I cannot continue to buy things and sit on them to sell. Business model of flipping something for $5 or under is not something that's going to work for me. If it works for you, great, keep doing it. Because the numbers are so important to me, I'm also looking up items in the shop. Almost everything here has been comped at some point with a few exceptions, like this next piece. Staying on that $2 rack, I saw this really pretty and unique seeming athletic top. It has all these cutouts. And if you look closely, you can see the Lululemon symbol all through. This was originally priced at just $5, which I found surprising, but it does not have an interior brand tag. So if you're not looking for that symbol, you wouldn't know what it was. It's also here on the back. Now I paid $2 and I have not run comps. I think I can make $20 profit. Let's see what future me thinks. Later on in that same shop, in the athletic department, while I was hunting out those half off orange tags, I found this blue tag, so full price. It's also Lululemon and $5. It's a heathered pink color. I don't think it's their Power Y tank. I will have to do some research and find the style. I find that they sell better if you have the style name on your listing. This other item was also green, so $2, and the brand is OJ. O-J-A-Y. This is a midi length eggplant purple silk dress with its original tie sash. The last item from that store that I can show you is this. I picked it up for the print. It's a map. And I love those little um, ruched sleeves as well. Also green, so $2. And the brand is called Friends of Couture. Really thick. And it felt like it could be quality. That was it for the first shop. I was pretty excited about how the day was going. We had coffee and then we were off to another. This next Salvation Army had the same color tag sales happening. They also pulled all of their green $2 items and put them on a rack outside. And that's where I found this. Just an oversized slouchy Target sweater. It's missing the material tag, but it feels like linen and cotton blend. And it's for me. So that was find number two. The first find, also before we even stepped inside, is behind me. These lovely poofs. So this is my current favorite color, mustard yellow, along with that rusty orange. 
I saw these both sitting directly inside the shop and immediately went to them, saw the price and then sat on them to see why were they only selling them for $5 each. It's a knit yarn made in India and they're fantastic. The only problem was I wasn't sure how I was going to get them home because I was riding public transit later that day. So lucky for me, my friend said, just put them in her trunk. Uh, she could drop them by later. So yay, the proofs came home with me and I get to start, you know, decorating a new home. Another fun thing for me, at least from that store, was this set of gold hangers. If you're a reseller then, <laughs> You're probably also thinking, yeah, it's a great find. We always need more hangers, don't we? And this entire pack was $5 and they're gold. So of course I love them more. So happy for this. And now sticking to their color tag rack, another green $2. We saw this brand in a recent video of mine where I'm discovering new brands, Chic. This is a size six. It is silky feeling, but it is polyester. Has a cool cutout in the back and that cute waist tie. Another item for myself for decoration purposes. This vintage book was $2. It's The Poems of Wilfred Owen. I did read a couple in the shop because I can't help myself. Uh, but mostly I bought it because because it's old and blue and weathered looking and two dollars. <laughs> it was given to someone in 1958. Their little signature is there. This edition was printed in 1955 in Great Britain. And I love to decorate with books and I did not bring any vintage books with me on this move. So yay. Another thing for me, this was the shop that just kept giving. This tiny crystal jar was $2. Isn't it just gorgeous? So I love to decorate in an old world European academia witchy style. This and that book will go well with that. Another item for resale from that shop, full price. This is a midi length black tiered ruffle dress. 100% cotton from the brand Seed. This was $12. I was willing to pay that because I believe I could sell this for around $59.99. So I will still make my $20 minimum mark. The last item from that shop is an accessory. It was also the last thing that I found as I went up near the counters. This is by brand R.M. Williams. I heard that name a lot when I was watching YouTube reseller videos while still in the States and looking for things here in Australia. So this is real cowhide, size 38. We've got some distressing there but I don't think that will be an issue for reselling it. It's a nice heavy weight buckle. And I think having that branding up there will make it worth more. The third store we went to was a bit of a bust. It was a smaller church sale and they had some really cute vintage items, but unfortunately their card reading machine was not working that day. So it was cash only and we were not prepared for that. I could see how it would be a cute little honey hole times during the year when someone donates a whole estate. I, I bet you could find some really good things there. 
next time I'll be prepared and have cash on me because there are going to be those smaller shops that only accept cash and I just wasn't thinking of that. And the fourth and final stop of the day, it was a small off your beaten path op shop. I would never have known it was there. So it's a good thing I have a friend to show me around. I'm not going to disclose the name because it is somewhere that she likes to go and shop and that can be her secret. That's not for me to tell. The first item I have to show you is by the brand Keepsake. Keepsake the label. I have tried to sell this in the States before and did not have that good of luck. I'm hoping that now I'm here in Australia where the brand originates, it will sell for better. This was $12. This dress is a size large. I was able to find the stock photos right away. I love the color, the sage green color and the cutout detailing. It's completely sheer there in the middle and then it has it again, that same banding at the bottom. This shop had some clothing priced individually, some priced for $1 if it was on clearance, and the rest was like a blanket price of I think $3. So this was on the expensive rack. On the $1 rack was this autumn colored quilted puffer coat. And I did not bring a coat with me. So this is probably going to stay as a mine. I love the colors. It's also reversible with just shiny brown on the other side. So love that. One dollar. Another dollar item. This is by the brand. Can't tell. Size small. Let's see if I can put that up if I figure it out, I'll put it up on the screen. But it's kind of faded. And this is a long, midi length black maxi dress with crochet lace accents. Very oversized, generous, boho style, and breathable. So, love that for a dollar. And the last item that I picked up from that same shop. These were not priced, so I believe they were $3. And the brand is Princess Polly, which we know was originally made here in Australia. This is a US size zero, Australian size four, denim jean. And what I really liked about this was the button fly is asymmetrical. which I think makes them fun and funky and unique. We can definitely sell those. That was my super fun day of op shopping with a new friend and not paying $30 per item like I have been in the city. Since so much of this haul was actually stuff that I'm keeping, I'm gonna say that my favorite item are these poofs back here, followed by the tiny little crystal jar. What about you? What was your favorite find from my haul? And what was your favorite from your own? Have you been thrifting lately? Are you reselling it or keeping it? Tell me below. It is a bit of an adventure for me getting out of the city and to these other op shops. There are still so many that are closer to me that I haven't tried yet. And thank you all for the suggestions. I have a list going and I'm gonna find my way to all of them eventually. I'll report back. So far, I need to make it out to a few different locations of U-Turn and Knopf. And I think there were some others in Surrey Hills. The Salvo's Warehouse still needs to be discovered as well as the Anglican Care Warehouse. If you have any others that you think I should add to this list, drop it below. I appreciate you so, so much. So that's it for this chapter. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Don't forget to hit subscribe before you leave and a thumbs up would really mean the world to me.